Good morning, everyone. This is Brother Dow from Fleming Island, Florida. I'm going to greet you today in the name of the only uh, Lord God, our Savior, our Husband, our King, the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank Him for this time, for this day. We thank Him for what He's done in our, our time and our day. Uh, and you said, what did He do? He fulfilled the promise word of the hour. Just as He's done uh, all the way through. You know, he, when He met uh, Moses over the, He said, I remember my promise. And they thought, well, you know, He's probably forgot all that. No, He didn't forget. He was right on, right on time. So, and He was right on time all down through the ages. And he's right on time this morning doing exactly the plan of God. Nobody can thwart it. Nobody can stop it. You can't slow it down. You can't speed it up. It's going to be fulfilled just like he said it would. And so we've come to a place and uh, a time that we are more or less looking back to what God has done. Oh, you say, look, I can look all the way back to Calvary. Does that mean that I had to, to physically be there at Calvary to receive what was done on Calvary? No, but I look back and I say, glory to God. He died for me. He set me free. So, and so as... The word comes in as being fulfilled as we look back and recognize and identify with it. Well, that's how you accept the word. But when you when you just say, well, well, that's what people do. They, you're talking about the cross of Calvary. They say, Psh, what's that got to do with me? You know, a man died. There's been a lot of men died. What's that got? Well, it wasn't for you then. Never mind. But if you accept that, it makes all the difference. And then when God does something for your day and your hour, and you accept that, it makes all the difference. But not all people will accept it. But don't worry. God knew who would and who would not. And he made provisions for both. <clears throat> so, that's the kind of God we serve. He's not just out here, well, I wonder if I do this, will somebody uh, be able to recognize it? No, he knew just who would recognize it and who would believe it and follow it before there was a world. So, <clears throat> everything is running perfectly with him and the people are doing just what they've always done. Uh, they put him back in the past. They put him in the future. They totally reject it. And we just keep moving on. So we thank the Lord for that. Let's open with prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you today. Lord, it's good to know that you have a plan, Lord. And that we are in the plan, Lord. You, Lord, you, you set it up in your great mind before the foundation of the world. You knew exactly how it would because you're omniscient, Lord. You know all things. And so, Lord, you know, you knew who would and who would not. And you made provisions, Lord. So, Lord, I'm counting myself as one of the believers this day that you knew would be here and you would send the word and would be accepted, Lord. So, we thank you for that. Now, Lord, as we look into your word, we pray, Lord, this morning that you'd come and be with us. Speak to us, Lord, by the great Holy Spirit, and we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. So, uh, I want to take a little subject <clears throat> this morning, and uh, I don't think I've ever really taken this subject to to really maybe try to explain it or go into it. But anyway, we're going to, we're going to look at it today. And uh, surely there's, I don't think you could cover the whole thing in one one message. But uh, anyway, it'll be a good 
foundation uh, to start with. But, but I want to give this a title this morning, Between the Son of God and Son of David. Between the Son of God and Son of David. So, uh, I've chosen uh, Malachi 4 as a reading place, and St. Luke 17, and Revelation 3, 21. So, I uh, should... Uh, cover, uh, uh, let's see, it'll cover the, the subject for us as we read in the scripture. So let's read Malachi 4, 5, and 6. Behold, I, I. Now, the I, was it Malachi? The I is the Lord God Himself. Behold, I will send you a light of the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful, dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall, not he may be, he, no, he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the father, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Now, let's look to uh, Luke 17, when we'll start with verse 28 and come down to 30. And uh, no doubt if you're a reader of the message, and if you are a, a Bible reader, uh, these would be uh, fairly common scriptures to you. Okay, Luke 17, 28. Likewise, also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, and, and they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall, now there's that word shall, not maybe, not no, it shall, even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. So, this is going to be Give us some, some little hints here what's going to be going on as it was in the days of Sodom. So, hello. So, even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Okay, let's look over to, to Revelation 3, uh, 21 and 22. And remember, we're talking about between the Son of God and the Son of of David. Okay, Revelation 3.21 To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne even as I also overcame and sat down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear let him, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. The Spirit is talking. <clears throat> the Spirit is talking to the churches. It's not talking to the world. It's not talking to the unbeliever. Because they don't know nothing about this. It wasn't sent for them. The only way that they could ever, they would have to recognize Jesus Christ. They would have to recognize Him as the Savior. Repent and be baptized and come into the body. By one spirit, we're all baptized into one body. So that's how it works. Now, I was thinking, he said, now, to him that overcometh, I will grant to sit with me in my throne. Okay, so the overcomer's going to sit with Jesus in his throne. And I was thinking about, well, I looked up the word throne just to give us a, 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 a correct definition and <clears throat> the word throne is sovereign power so if it's sovereign power there's only one sovereign I know of and that's God so it's the throne is God and it's, it's his sovereign power and then there was another one it says a ceremonial chair for a ruler <clears throat> and that's a man's throne and you know People have gotten these thrones 
They've got them all confused and mixed up. They think that God's on a, on a throne, on a chair somewhere, sitting there. When that has nothing, that's man. We had, we've, had, we've had kings and rulers and dictators and everything else. And still over there in England and these other countries that have kings and queens, they sit on their throne. Well, that's a ceremonial chair for the ruler. But we're talking about God's throne. And that is where the sovereign power is. And, and Brother Ram said there was three thrones. There was God. In, in the beginning, God. He had a throne. That's where His sovereign power can go forth from. But that throne, now, He had three. He had three of them, but they didn't wind up with three because the one that was in God moved down into Christ because all that God was, He put in Christ and He became the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So, the throne that was in God moved right on down into Christ. And guess what? All that was in Christ, He had put in His body, His body of believers. The throne is now in His body, His body of believers, and it's the same throne. And it's got the same power, sovereign power, throne. There's, we're not sitting on some chair somewhere. This is not some, some a Hollywood story that somebody's told. No. We're talking about Almighty God fulfilling His Word. So, that sets things up to where we want to be talking about this morning. Between the Son of God and Son of David. Now, <clears throat> the other day I was thinking, and I, I let it just come on my mind. I thought, well, I'll just I'll make this statement, and I put this on uh, Facebook that the the name of the Father is the Lord Jesus Christ. The name of the Son is the Lord Jesus Christ. The name of the Holy Ghost is the Lord Jesus Christ because there's only one God and one name. And you wouldn't believe <clears throat> I got a, a lot of positive, but you wouldn't believe some of the answers I got. It shows that people, they have no concept of the Godhead. They said, how can you make Jesus Christ God? <laughs> I didn't make Him God. He was God. I can't make anything. But what was it? It was the name of the Father. Jesus said, I come in my Father's name. And that was God above us. The name of the Son was the Lord Jesus Christ. God with us. And the name of the Holy Ghost is the Lord Jesus Christ. God in us. How anybody could, well, I know how they do because they do not have the mind of Christ. They've got a, a carnal mind that they were, they were born with, born in sin. What? They were born in unbelief. They'll stay in unbelief. And if they don't get a new birth, there's no way that they could that see these things about God. There's, it's just, it's not possible. So all they got is some kind of a, intellectual conception of God and they can have as many gods as they want to and still say that He's one. Just like the denominations. But on the same thing, Son, Son of Man, Son of God, Son of David is the same God. That's not three gods. That's three sonships that he was moving through. And, and Brother Brown said, there is no eternal sonship. 
Son means that it come from something. Okay, it had a beginning. Oh, my. So it's the same God. It's the same God. It is the same God. There's one God, and His name is the Lord Jesus Christ. You say, well, where did you get that from? Well, let's look at here. Jesus said in Matthew 28, 18, and let's go down a couple of verses here. Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. There it is. Sovereign power. All power. Go ye therefore... And teach all nations, baptizing them in the name, name, singular name, of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. And then Peter gets up after Jesus Christ in the form of the Holy Ghost had come into the upper room and Fill them up. And they said, well, men, and what can we do? And Peter said, then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of your sins and you, you shall receive the gift <clears throat> of the Holy Ghost. And then, oh, they think, well, you know Holy Ghost, all that is, is Jesus Christ in spirit form. He said, I come from God, I go back to God. But I'm with you now, I'm walking along with you, but I'm going to come back and I'm going to get in you. He couldn't get in you as a man. That man had a, had, that man was here for a purpose to manifest God to be the sacrifice to pay for your sin. And then, in Acts 2.36, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ. Name of the Father, name of the Son, name of the Holy Ghost. There's none of them names. They're titles. They're titles to the they're titles to the one God, the Lord Jesus Christ. But you think the world will accept that? No, they can't. And we think this is we think this is so simple, and it is, but you have to have the Holy Spirit to be able to know these things. These things are not some kind of an intellectual thing that you hear and you memorize and you say, well, that's a no. It's a revelation to you. The new birth is, is a revelation of Jesus Christ personally to you. Makes you a new creature in Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus. All things pass away and all things become new. Now, and I was talking about this the other day. I said, Saul on the road did not meet a man in the sky. Well, that's what evidently everybody thinks he did. Oh, they, well, you know, there was Jesus standing up there. No, evidently, the way they got it pictured, I guess, it was Jesus standing on the right hand of the Father. And he was talking but he, he didn't do that. Saul on the road did not meet a man in the sky. He met the pillar of fire and he asked that thing that was talking to him. He said, Who art thou, Lord? Capital L-O-R-D. And he knew when he said that, that was just like him saying, Who art thou, Jehovah? Huh. 
And you know what it, it answered him. It said, I am Jesus. I am is Jesus. So Jehovah of the old is Jesus of the new. Jehovah of the old, the Spirit of God, is Jesus of the new, the Holy Spirit now in us. Because before He was above us, He couldn't come in because of sin. But no, that's, that's too simple. We're, we're, looking for the, we're looking for the man. Well, that's what they're looking for today. But you know what Brother Bram said about it? Here in Christ is a mystery. <clears throat> and you know, this day, we have been caught up. And we weren't caught up to see a man in the sky. We were caught up by the Spirit. The same one that was speaking to Saul on the road. But I know that's too much. No. But listen to what Brother Ram said here in Christ the Mystery. He said, Glory, that great angel of the covenant, that one, 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 the great angel one, who was with Moses in the wilderness, that one who come to Paul on the road to Damascus, that same one permitted his picture to be taken with us. That same one that was in the picture, the in the picture in Life magazine. That one right there. That same one. The same one that come to Moses. The same one that was with, with Paul. The same one that they had took the picture and it hangs in, in Congress and everywhere. The only supernatural being ever photographed. That same one in Life magazine. Not a half a dozen. The same one. The same word by the same God through the same channels by the same way by the same promise wherever two or three are gathered in my name I am there in the midst. Then, now listen, then he is here. And the people that claim that Brother Brown was a prophet and claim to believe, and they say, well, you know, he's here in a way. No, that ain't what he said. That's what you said. He said, he is here. The angels of God are encamped about those that fear him, that hangs only to his word. No man can respect that word without fearing God. Remember last week, last week we talked about there is no fear of God. They think God is, he went on a long journey somewhere and he's not even interested in what's happening down here. See, then he is here this morning with us as we worship him in spirit. So, the same one that Paul met <clears throat> is the same one that we met. And he's the same Jesus. And if we could ask him, well, oh, what's your name? He'd say, the Lord Jesus Christ. But, anyway. Okay, I want to, uh, this is in the Laodicean Church Age, in the Church Age book. It says, first of all, that messenger is going to be a prophet. He will have the office of a prophet. Oh, he's going to have the office. Well, you know, John the Baptist was born a prophet. But one day, he stepped into the office of a prophet. Jesus himself was born a prophet, the Son of Man. But one day, he stepped into the office of a prophet. Brother Branham was born a prophet. But one day he stepped into the office of a prophet. Huh. Let's see. 
He will have the prophetic ministry. He will be based solidly on the Word because when he prophesies or has a vision, it will always be Word-oriented and it will always come to pass. He will be vindicated as a prophet be because of his accuracy. The proof that he is a prophet is found in Revelations 10, 7 at the sounding. Not first pull, not second pull, third pull, the opening of the word, the mysteries revealed because when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished as he's declared to his servants the prophet. Then you talk about, and then they got they still got mysteries today. Matter of fact, the main mystery they well, well we don't know. Well, hello, he said it was here. Okay, let's look at this harvest time here in Phoenix, 1964. Now, and you would think, after all these 50-something years after the seals, that <clears throat> these things would just be, we'll put it like no way they can. Well, it could, no, it Look here, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, this, you're talking about Greek in another language. We speak in new tongues. You'll never, you'll never get it. Harvest time, 64, Phoenix. I was discuss, discussing the Trinity with a Baptist minister. Now I have to discuss the Trinity with so-called message people. Because they got God here, and they got Him over there, and they got Him coming. He's on the chair. He's on the right hand. Where is he? He is here in his body. Mm. Uh, the other night, and I told him it was only terminology. And so we find so we come to find out. He said, <clears throat> another little minister there from a seminary said, Well, Mr. Brown. You are trying to make the people believe in apostolic religion. I said, certainly, the only one there is. Yeah, that's the only one, because that's the one that come on the day of Pentecost, and God never changed his mind about his word. And he said, sir, where did you go to school at? I said, on my knees, my brother. See, that's where I got not theology, but neology. I said, that's where I found him. And he said, Mr. Brown, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, like they got on the day of Pentecost, you try to say, that's, that's, that's today? I said, the Bible said, sir, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now listen, I said, that was Jesus Christ that come on the day of Pentecost. Oh, yeah. And they thought, what? Jesus Christ, what do you mean he's a man? He was a man. He said, I come from God and I'm going back to God and I'm going to come and I'm going to get in you. I said that with Jesus Christ that come on the day of Pentecost. Oh yeah. No, the same one. Yet a little while I'll pray the Father and he'll send you another company which is the Holy Ghost. And a little while and the world won't see me no more. Me no more. Yet you shall see me for I will be with you even in you to the consummation to the end of the world. I said, yea, that's him that come on the day of Pentecost. Yes, sir. He came and lived and then noticed in the form of the person of the Holy Ghost. Jesus Christ in the person of the Holy Ghost as we understand the Godhead. And you know, <clears throat> I was just thinking about a while ago when we read Matthew 28, 19. He said, 
And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. And we keep saying, if he's with us, how have we got him coming? Because Brother Brown said he was only gone 10 days. And he come back on the day of Pentecost. And I can't find the scripture anywhere where he took off and went back and got on next to the armchair up there anywhere. But see, all of these things, look here, they're clear as a bell now. Look here, the light is shining on this stuff and it ain't nothing but some kind of a myth and makeup that come out of the dark ages. Now, the, the light is shining 100%. We're not seeing through some glass darkly somewhere, trying to peek around and see through the shadows and, and see what's going on. No. But I don't care what you say. And so, make a long story short, who was that come on the day of Pentecost? That was Jesus Christ in the form of the Holy Ghost which we know now he called it the Son of God through the church ages. Now look here. But between Son of God and Son of David, something's got to take place. Now, proving his word there in Jeffersonville, <clears throat> 1964. Now after 1900 years, with the church ages past, Oh, no, wait a minute. The church age is past. Well, we're still, we're still at, no, I'm not in no Laodicea. You might be. The only people that's left in Laodicea is the unbelievers and, and the old guy riding the, the pale horse with a name called Death. He's over there. Now, that's the only place he can go. When he leaves there, he goes into the lake of fire. But if, if you want to be over there, that's up to you. <clears throat> With the church ages past, and all these things he pro prophesied, that Luther, Wesley, we went through that and seen it drawn out here, and the moon, the moon come down and drawed it out, and the Lord drawed it on the board here for us and showed it and come down himself and confirmed it to be right. And after 1,900 years, we're at the end of Laodicea in church age. He promised, <clears throat> Luke 17, 30, that the same Son of Man, He promised it would be revealed in the days like a Sodom upon the earth. Did He do it? Does, he have, does it have to come to pass? He said it's impossible. Now remember, He cut in three sons' names, Son of Man, a prophet, Son of God, the Spirit, Son of David, for the millennium, but in between this conjunction, now according to his own word, in the day when the Son of Man will be revealed, revealed himself as what? Not Son of God, Son of Man. He will reveal himself in a different way. Now, what does that make? Okay, this revealing, what does that make? Malachi 4, exactly right. Because some of man is prophet. We're promised a prophet. Last book of the Old Testament. Behold, I send unto you. I send unto you. Elijah the prophet. <laughs> See, the Son of Man will reveal himself not in a whole big denominations and things as we've had through the ages. But he will manifest himself as Son of Man again to make manifest Malachi 4. So look here. Malachi 4 and St. Luke 17 are tied together. You cannot separate them. I know they try. And in that day, I will send you Elijah the prophet. 
and he shall turn the hearts of the children back to the faith of the apostolic fathers. Oh, now what's he going to do? Away from all this denominationalism. Ooh. So look here. If you've got some old denominational doctrine that you petting around and hauling around with you, I would suggest you put it in the trash can. But oh no, we love that old stuff. Old dead stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. And come back to the original word again to draw out the last day bride tree that he promised. In the evening time it would be light, shall be light. Not through the misty day, it shall be light. But it'll be the day that can't be called day or night. See, it's making up the body. But the same head that was here in the east is here in the the West. Did you get that? The same head that was in the East is here in the West again. There shall be light in the evening. What is a light? It's the Word. The, the, the manifested Word is the light. And you give them the manifested Word and it scares them to death. It's like you run in a dark room one night and all the bugs. Why? They cannot take the light. They can't stand the light. But we are the light. We're the light. We're the manifested word of the time, the season, right now. Oh, now here. Now remember, between. Son of God and Son of David. Between. And look here, it won't be a long time because you've got to finish up the church ages for Him to come on the scene. What? As Son of Man. And then, boom, we go right into the Son of David. Alright? But they got that all figured out. Okay, no doubt. Just like they got this all figured out. Okay. Does God change His mind? No. Los Angeles, California, 1965. Now, just think, he's over here in Los Angeles where he said all the sin was heaped up at. But he's still manifesting. Now, Jesus came in three names. Son of Man, which is a prophet. Son of God, which went through the church age then Son of David. But in between the Son of God and Son of David, according to His own word, and according to Malachi 4, and many scriptures, He's to return back into His church in physical form. Now, as soon as they see that, they say, well, uh, Jesus is going to come walking amongst us. He'll be in that body of 2,000 years ago. And, and, you, and you, you might as well, you, you, there's nothing you can do. That's all they can see. Every time you see physical form, they think about, when you're talking about God, the, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, they think, well, here comes a man. And you might as well, there's no use to talk about it, no use to talk to them. That's what they got in their mind, and that's the only thing they're going to accept. So just move on with it. But that's not what he's talking about. Now, he's to return back into his church in physical form. In the people. Because we are his physical body. We, his, his bride, his wife, we are his body. In human beings, 
in the way of being a prophet. Why? Because a prophet is going to identify him. And him is the word. Now, how can you accept Jesus Christ and deny the word that he has manifested? Hmm. Well, they claim, yeah, but a claim is, is definitely not a surety. <clears throat> in physical form, in the people, in human beings, in the way of being a prophet, see, and watch what this man done when he come down to see Abraham. First thing, he told Abraham about his name being changed. And you know, we've had a name change. Oh yeah. We from we went from Miss Laodicea to Mrs. Jesus Christ. Because we got married. <clears throat> and he told Abraham about his name being changed because he didn't call him Abram, he called him Abraham. And when he did, why? We find out that he said, Where is thy wife Sarah? S A R A H, not S A R R A. Why? He said, She's in the tent behind you. Huh. And just think, that was the sign of the Messiah. That was the sign of Elohim. That was the sign of God Almighty in flesh. And, and how many times was it manifested around the world through unbelief in everything else? Well, you can't hardly pick up a message in especially 64, 65, coming through there. And he's, he's just out on the evangelistic trail and said, well, you, well, your name is so-and-so. You know, you went to the doctor a couple days ago and you got so-and-so and you come from here and you're not from here. You're from there. Just, I mean, go boom, 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 boom. And he said, that's not me. That's him. Him who? That's God Almighty. That I am. And he called that the Messiah sign. And they're looking for the Messiah. The Messiah is the Word. Mm. Boy, I'll tell you what. You're telling me that religion can't mess things up. Huh. Because why? They're working with a carnal mind. Now, I have heard, but now I see. That sounds good. I have heard, but now I see. Now. That critic saying, why would a God of mercy could open up the Red Sea and stand there letting them poor Christians be eat up with lions and burnt and everything else, set up there like he laughed about it, the poor ignoramus? Did he not know except that corn of wheat falls in the ground? It had to die through the dark ages like any other corn of wheat has to go beneath the earth and be buried to bring forth the first reformation, them two blades of Luther? the stalk, and then it had to come forth when the Westlands out yonder to bring forth the pollen, the tassels, and the great missionary age. It had to come forth in the Pentecostals for the restoration of the gifts almost to, almost to deceive the very elected. Somebody was talking about the other day, oh, we need, we need the gifts in the church. No, what we need is the giver. Hmm. If you have the giver, you got every gift that he wants to use. I said that he wants to use. Mm -hmm. Almost to deceive the very elect. It looks like a bunch of wheat grain. Open it up and there's no wheat there at all. It's only a shuck. 
But back in there, they begin to form the little oneness organization, the trinity organization, the two-ness organization. My goodness, they still got the two-ness today. you think that thing would have went away. The church, of, the church of God organization. All these organized and just death exactly. And now what happens? But it's the shelter for the wheat that's been growing through it all the time. Now, it began to pull away. The wheats begin to be seen. This is not a Pentecostal age. Hello? This is the latter day age. This is the bright age. This is the evening light. This is when Malachi 4 must be fulfilled to follow Christ's pattern. This is Luke 17.30 to be fulfilled. This is the second, and Jeremiah and all the rest of them, and Joel has spoke of these days. This is that day. I have heard, Lord, as it was coming, but now I see with my eye. What do you see in the fulfillment of the word for this day? Malachi 4, Luke 17, 30, Revelations 10, all the rest of the scriptures not going to be fulfilled. They have been fulfilled. We've heard about them. We've read about them. We've heard about them, but now we see. Now we, the world, don't see nothing. They ain't even supposed to see. Jesus said, they'll see me no more. So how do you think they're going to believe anything? How could a blind man see to get around? Okay. <clears throat> How about what is the attraction on the mountain? Question, what is the attraction on the mountain? That's the title, but he's asking a question. Then he makes his statement. Jeffersonville, 1965. What happened upon Mount Sunset? God confirming his word. So, if you want to know what happened, it's God confirming His word. That's what all this noise is about. Notice, it's God fulfilling His promised word again of Revelations 10, 1 to 7. Fulfilling. Revelations 10, 1, 2, 7. Mighty angel, the angel of the covenant. And in the days of the sounding of the seventh angel's message, the mystery of God should be finished. The hidden mystery of Revelations 10, 1, 2, 7. Seven, the last message to the last church age. Ah, well, if that's the last one, why they haven't for another one? <clears throat> the last message to the last church age fulfills exactly in this age, St. Luke 17, 30. Did you hear that? Did you hear that blind prosecutor? Did you hear what he said? Or do you even have an ear to hear? Fulfills exactly in this age. St. Luke 17, 30. The day when the Son of Man shall be revealed. Revealed. The day, the time, the hour that the Son of Man shall be revealed. And listen to what he says. And there, after this goes on, what's going to happen? Well, he said in one place, you know, when he comes out, 
He said, Janice and Jan Brise come out. Impersonators. But here he said, and there shall arise false prophets and false Christ, false anointed ones, show great signs and wonders in so much it'll deceive the elected if. Now these guys is really got it. Well, you think. Man, they come, in, they come in with the Bible on one arm and a message book on the other. Well, no, I don't know about a message book. Some, some think that's a little too, little too radical, you know. You know, uh, we believe the Bible. <laughs> we say, say, you believe the Bible, and you don't believe Malachi 4 and St. Luke 17. There was supposed to be a ministry that the Son of Man was going to come and fulfill it, and he was going to turn the hearts of the children back to the Father. Oh, yeah, I believe that. Well, why don't you believe what he said then? Are you ashamed? I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it's a power of God. I guess if you'd been back in your day, uh, you'd have had to tear around the old Torah because you know, well, you know, old Paul, you know, you know he was he's a one hater and he would he hated the church and everything else. And now he's over here saying we're supposed to listen to him and he's over here writing letters there. They say that's well, God's word. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he said, Now, there shall arise false prophets and false Christ, show great signs and wonders, insomuch it would deceive the elected if possible. The people still in doubt, and, <laughs> and look here. And as usual, the poor old church, as usual, the church is just as puzzled. Well, that ain't saying much for the church, is it? But remember, now he said there's going to rise <clears throat> false prophets, false Christ. Now remember, way back in the Old Testament, God had a prophet come on the scene and Ahab didn't like him. But you know, he was meeting up with Jehoshaphat. And Jehoshaphat, and Brother Brown said, he still had a little something spiritual about him. So he had all these 400 prophets and what more. And he said, well, they're all, they're all with us. They all said, go on up. He said, but don't you have one more? He said, yeah, I, I got Micaiah, but that guy, he always speaks evil. He said, no, no, don't say that. He said, let's see what he says. So here comes the guy. He said, yeah, go on up. But I've seen Israel scattered as sheep with no shepherd. I said, that didn't I tell you? But you know, in Micaiah's vision, he seen something. It said, now, the Lord is going to send a lion spirit. Remember that lion spirit? And where did that lion spirit go? It didn't go over to the Philistines and get in them. To the Assyrians and get in them. Didn't go down to the bar room or to the prostitute house. I'm sorry to say something, but I'll just say that. The lion spirit got into those preachers and caused them to prophesy a lie. It says, go on up. God is with you. And here come old Zedekiah. And he, he come up like some of these modern evangelists. Now they, he got him a set of horns and he run all around on the platform over these horns. He said, yeah, with these horns. He said, you're going to push a plow out of our country. That belongs to us. And he danced and shindigged and everything else up there. And he had them all roused up and probably hollering and shouting and jumping over the pews and everything else. Tell him about That sound like these modern preachers of today. Now I 
told somebody the other day. As a matter of fact, I put it on Facebook. Read an article about, it was about the wealth of these popular preachers. And my goodness, you wouldn't believe the money. It, now, this is just the popular ones. I don't know what these little underlings, how much they got. But it was from a, just, I think the lowest one I saw was like $8 million. From like eight million to almost a billion dollars. And I thought to myself, what what in the world would would a preacher need with all that money? Oh, you say, well, he's got to buy a jet plane. Well, I don't know what a jet plane costs, but you know, uh, Paul didn't have a jet plane and he turned he he went around the world. But anyway, so all that money and amassing all that wealth and out there telling the people that Jesus is coming. Well, if Jesus comes, what are they going to do with all those millions? They can't take it with them. You'd you think if they believed their own message that they would be trying to do something with it. Give it away. How much money does a man need? But no, it just lets me know that they don't believe their own message. And what is it? It's a lying spirit that's got into their mouth. But now, when you say that's out there, well, I don't know. I've heard about a lot of people in this message that are just filthy, filthy wreck. And you say, well, that's okay. They can be as rich as they want to. As long as they preach the truth. But now, so we, but brother, we're talking about the message now. And he talks about after this fulfilling of this Luke 17 30 that he said there after this happened there's going to arise what well, well if, if, if false prophets and false Christ are going to arise what are they going to be against they're going to be because they're going to have a lying spirit in their mouth and they are going to be against the truth. The truth that God has vindicated. Look here. God vindicated Micaiah's message and he said, he told Ahab, he said, look here, if you come back at all, God ain't spoke to me. Well, what happened? He did not come back. Look here. All he done was go over there and get killed and fulfill Elijah's prophecy. Huh. Tell you what, God knows what he's doing. You talking about, you talking about a chess player, he knows the last move before he's even moved the first one. But no. Alright? So the lying spirit got in these guys' mouth and they are against the truth. And the truth is that Jesus Christ is here in the form of the Holy Ghost. He is here fulfilling His Word, the Word that He promised for this day. And we are here showing what the promise that was fulfilled. Taking care of our part. Revelations 10, 8 through 11. But you know one thing about it. <clears throat> Brother Brown said... <clears throat> God takes his man, but not his spirit. The devil takes his man, but not his spirit. So them old lying spirits are right here, still today. Now, when their eyes were opened, they knew him. There in Tampa, Florida, 1964, when their eyes were opened, they knew him. Now remember, 
Jesus never repeated it. He never done one more time in there. But they said the whole city believed on him because of the woman's testimony. Now, what woman? The woman at the well. She said, Sir, you must be a prophet. Okay. Yeah, he said, Hello. When she knew the promise, what the Messiah would be, and when she seen that promise fulfilled, it opened her eyes, see? They had been closed with sin, but when that promise, she said, that's the Messiah will do that when he comes. Oh, oh wait a minute. The Messiah will do that when he comes? Well, hello, the Messiah has come. And are you saying Brother Branham is the Messiah? No, I'm saying the Messiah was in Brother Branham. Because the Messiah was in Jesus Christ. The Messiah is God. Jesus, I said, I can't do nothing. I'm just a man. It's the Father that he does all this. So look here, don't put nothing on the flesh of Jesus Christ. He was just the outside that was housing Almighty God. That flesh had one purpose, to manifest to God, to go to the cross and pay our sins and die. He said, Messiah will do that when he comes. He said, I am he. Her eyes opened. Well, glory to God, my eyes opened too. I hope yours did. She has eternal life because her eyes opened up. Peter's eyes was open. Nathaniel's, we talked about it last night. What it done to her eyes in these days, the promise fulfilled, it has opened their eyes. And when in Luke, 7 or in St. John 14, 12, Hebrews 13 and 8, St. John 14, 9, we've seen Luke 17, 27, 28, and all these scriptures that's promised, Malachi 4, and all of them fulfilled right before us. Hello. Hello, lying preacher. All of them fulfilled right before us. What has it done to our eyes? If it doesn't open up, oh, wait a minute. If it doesn't open them, it'll blind them eternally. It opens some, it blinds the others, see. It opens them to who it is these last days what he promised to do this is what he said he would do restore back the faith hmm. uh -huh. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to skip some of this but there was a little thing here in uh, the world is falling apart there in Shreveport, 1963. And I'll just have to get the, the, the end of it here. He said, but Paul said over in the book of Hebrews 14.25, he said, for we receive a kingdom that cannot be moved. How did we get into it? Not by a religious system, but a kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom. Now listen. The kingdom, the king and his word is the same. It's within you, vindicating the hour that we're now living in, the promise that God made for the age that here we are living with the king sitting in heavenly places, watching him doing these things. Okay, whoa, wait, wait a minute, what are you talking about? I'm talking about between the Son of God and Son of David, there was this little space. He was 
was to come back again as son of man. I am saying he has come back as son of man. He has manifested. He has fulfilled that. And that moves us right on to son of David. And they say, oh, wait a minute. David's the king. He's going to be sitting on the throne. Yes. This is his throne. I guess they think they think the son of David is going to be like they thought the son of man. They thought, well, you know, it says son of man, so Jesus Christ was the son of man, so I know Jesus, he's going to come back and uh, he's, he's going to have a healing ministry and he's going to prove himself and he's going to discern and he's going to do everything. Well, he did. But he done it in his prophet. Because when he come back, he was the Holy Ghost in the people. But oh no, they're not oh, no, I'm I'm looking for I'm looking for him to come. I'm looking for that man in the sky. Well, hello, keep on looking. There ain't no man in the sky. No man in the sky. But now they think the same thing about the son of David. Oh, well, son of David is king. You know, he's he going to have this big throne and he's going to be sitting up there and, uh, and we're going to be sitting next to him and we're going to be doing all this and cracking the whip and ruling and reigning and, ooh, wow. Carnal. Pure carnality. So, the kingdom, the king and his word is the same. Living with the king. Well, sure, the king is here. Oh, but you know, no, 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 wait a minute. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Son of man, son of God, son of David is the same God. But they have a claim. Now, he has come through the church ages as Son of God. That's been fulfilled. But in between Son of God and Son of David, that same God is going to come down and be Son of Man. And he has, and that has been fulfilled. Whether you want to believe it or not, it makes no difference to me. So that's fulfilled. So he goes right on into the son of David, king, and he's king. Look here, Brother Branham had the king's sword. He said, oh, he said, man, he said, you know, I was always kind of scared of a knife. He said, that thing popped in my hand. He said, whoa, it just fit my hand. And he said, that thing was beautiful. He said, that chrome blade glistening in the sun. And I thought, uh, a king. He said, no, no, no. This is the king's sword. He said, it's the word in the hand. Oh, how could he have the king's sword if the king wasn't here? How could he have the king's message? Because the king and his word is the same if the king wasn't here. Now, listen to this. Abraham, and they said, oh no, son of David, that's to the Jews, you know that. You, you, you're a Gentile, you ain't got no claim on him as son of David. Wait a minute. If that be the case, Abraham was a Gentile from over around Babylon somewhere. He was a Gentile and he became a Hebrew. And being in Christ, we become Abraham's seed. And we became, look here. That is what the new birth does for us. 
What does a new birth do? It makes you Abraham's royal seed. You are the real Jew, not outward as Isaac and all the rest of them was. You are the real Jew inward. Go read Romans 2. I think it's 28 and 29. He taken a people out of the Gentiles for his name. But no, that don't make any difference. They're going to they hold on to these other things till the whole world is on fire and they're going to be one they're going to say well you know they said they were going to they said that the Lord was coming they said there was a rapture my goodness the world's on fire world what's happening yeah what's happening you missed it that's exactly just like they missed it 2,000 years ago just like they missed it all down through the church ages but look here God's elect didn't miss it that's what it was all about now, I want to close with this. Proving his word there in Los Angeles. He said, as it was in the days of Sodom, so shall it be when the Son of Man is being revealed. Now, did you notice? From Son of God, just before he become Son of David, he reveals himself again as Son of Man. Did you notice the scripture? Okay, so a little in between there now. For he always does, he never does nothing unless he makes it known to his servants, the prophets. That's exactly, that's what his promise was, see. He never does nothing, God cannot lie. He always reveals it first before he does it. He reveals it and he does it. Fulfills it and reveals it. So look at here. Between Son of God, Son of David, this little space, Son of Man. Son of Man has been fulfilled. Whether you believe it or not, we are in the Son of of David in a story God's God is in that last one and it's not some king somewhere sitting on a throne it is still the same Holy Spirit because God can never change from the Holy Spirit he that's what he is the same Holy Spirit here in his body producing his word that he promised. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, God's good. And the devil's a liar. And uh, there's a lot of that going on. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you again today. Lord, we thank you for the simplicity of your word. Lord, you put it in your book and then you bring it to pass and then you think, flash the light on it and said, there it is. And Lord, the believers see it and they believe it. The unbeliever, he, <laughs> he just walks on. The made believer, he takes a piece or a part and he moves on. But look here. We are the Word. We are the Word made flesh for this day. That's what it's all about. And Lord, there's only one way that we can be that and that is through the power of the Holy Spirit that comes and changes us and makes us part of the body of Christ. So, Lord, we thank you for that this day. We give you praise, honor, and glory. Thank you for the revelation of Jesus Christ. Pray, God, that you would continue to open this word as we walk, as we walk in the light. The prophet said it would unfold and reveal its own self. We thank you for that promise. And we thank you for it in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.